Work in physics. Uh, three parts. Definition of work, work energy theorem, and CSI, was it speeding? So when there's an angle between the force and the displacement, work by definition is force times the cosine angle times the displacement. This is the work by definition in physics. SI unit is joules. Uh, work energy theorem. The net work done on the object is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. So work can be done to accumulate kinetic energy. Work can change energy. So here's one example, the skid mark on the road. So when a car breaks, where did the kinetic energy go? Well, the kinetic energy uh, is reduced to zero because when the car stops, the final kinetic energy is zero. And the change, uh, this is a much simplified model. The change equals to the friction times the displacement. The negative sign means friction and the displacement are along opposite directions. So cosine 180 degree is a negative one. Okay, so let's look at some um, specific um, numbers. If a 1,000 kilogram car suddenly started to break and stopped after leaving a three meter skid mark, what was the speed of the car initially? So you can see the skid mark can be used to figure out the speed before the car started breaking. If you do some research, we can find the static friction coefficient on the road is close to 0 0.3. So the kinetic friction equals the kinetic friction coefficient multiplied by the normal force. The normal force in this case equals to the weight, or mg. And therefore, um, the work done by friction force is negative mu of k, that's the kinetic friction coefficient, multiplied by mg, the weight, multiplied by the dis displacement, dot x, equals to the change in kinetic energy, which is half mv initial square. Okay, so if we cancel out the mass, because the mass is on both sides, so we actually do not need to see to use the mass. The initial speed is 4.2 meters per second. So by looking at the skid marks, the longer skid mark uh, represents a larger speed, um, and the shorter skid mark represents a smaller speed. Um, example, another example, CSI was the car speeding. If a car involved in a bad asset, accident. A lot, of, a lot of police departments have police officers trained to analyze the road accident using physics. Okay, here's an example. If the skid mark is 31 meters long and before the car hits a tree at 16 meters per second, there's a way to determine that. Uh, the kinetic friction coefficient between the road and tire can be determined as 0.62. Uh, there can be experiments done to determine the friction coefficient, the exact one. Was the car speeding? Okay, analyze this. The kinetic friction coefficient is 0.62. I reframe the question because we do not really have a law that says was the car speeding or not. We cannot directly answer that with the physics law. Uh, reframing here means we ask a new question. Here what we can ask is what was the car's speed? Apply the work energy theorem. Um, if we apply that, the final um, kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy equals to the work done by friction. Friction always does negative work. It's a, what we call a dissipative force. That means it takes energy out of the system. Um, so friction equals to the kinetic friction coefficient multiplied by the normal force, which in this case is uh, weight. So if we solve the equation, uh, initial velocity is 25.15 meters per second. And we evaluate that this is larger than the 11.17 meters per second for a residential area speed limit. Conclusion, this car was speeding. 
Um, so in summary, we can see that in police investigation, they can use physics to actually calculate the car's initial speed. Um, this is a way for them to figure out what caused or who is responsible for some of the bad accidents. In summary, we learned about the definition of work, um, the work energy theorem, and we look at examples how physics can be used in police investigation.